Hello, my name is Jonathan Harris from Worldwide Camera Exchange. Bronica medium format cameras, available in three formats. There's the 645 cameras, that's the ETR, ETRS, ETRSI series cameras. There's the 66 format cameras, SQ, SQA, SQAI, and there's this, the Bronica GS1. What I'm gonna do now is just run through the features and just very, very quickly talk about the various accessories available for this camera. Okay, so Bronica GS1 cameras, really decent, well-made, reliable, high-quality cameras producing six by seven negatives on 120, or obviously 220 film. It's a modular system, back, body, viewfinder, lens, they can all be interchanged. And what I'm gonna do now is just, just, just run through the various controls to give you an idea of, of how of how the, the whole the whole system works. Starting starting with the body, starting on this side, there's the wind on crank. When the, when there's no when there's no film when there's no film in the camera, the camera will just wind and wind and wind and not, not fire. So if you're using one of these or testing one of these and you don't have a film in the back, just turn on the multiple exposure switch there, the camera will then cock and fire. So that's the wind on crank, multiple exposure lever for obviously multiple exposures or to get the camera working if there's no film. And just on the top there, you have the little switch which slides down. That allows you just to slide slide back the viewfinder, take the viewfinder off. Looking at the front of the camera, you have a shutter release button there. And on this side, you have the mirror lock up. So once the camera is wound on, you pull that to one side, the mirror locks up. It's a big six by seven centimeter mirror. So if you're using these things at slower speeds, they really do need to be mounted to a tripod and they really do need to be, you really do need to engage the mirror lock up to prevent vibration. Going to this side, lens release. The lens, just, the lens release just pulls down. Obviously make sure it's cocked, always make sure it's cocked because the shutter is in the lens. When the camera has been fired and the shutter in the lens has closed, if you were to take the lens off, obviously you'd fog the film. So there's an interlock to prevent the lens being taken off until the camera has been re-cocked, the mirror has been lowered. So at that point, you can then take off the lens like that and the film is protected. I'm just quickly running through the lens. I'm not gonna go through into, into a huge amount of detail. Obviously there's, 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 there's a vast range of lenses available from 30 mil all the way up to up to 500. So that's pretty much everything you, you would need. Predominantly prime lenses, they do do some zooms, but I'd steer clear of those. The prime lenses are much, uh, well, they're much more common and frankly, much, much better to use on the camera. They, they balance much better on the camera. Focusing there, aperture there. As I said, there is a, there is a leaf shutter in the lens. When you, um, when you mount the lenses to the camera, always make sure the lens is cocked. So make sure that the lens pin here is just pulled around to that green dot position. Sometimes if the um, the lens the lens mechanism becomes uncocked, this will just start uh, just flapping around and you'll see it isn't locked in the green position. So always make sure you, before you put the lens on the camera, that's pulled around into the green position. Once you've done that, you can then align the red dots and the camera will, the lens will go straight onto the camera. So lens release there. Here you have the shutter speed dial. It's an electronically controlled shutter. So the shutter speeds are controlled from here, even though the lens is, is in the, um, in the, sorry, the shutter rather is in the lens. Shutter speed dial there. This is the, uh, the silver button is the lens, is the back release. That needs to be pushed in to release the back. Obviously dark slide does need to be in to release the back to prevent the film being fogged. And this switch here is just the main on off switch. Just moving on to the back. As I said, that's the uh, the back release button. So if I, um, that just hinges off like that. On the back itself, you have the two levers there that you push together just to pop the back out open. Film loading is a fairly standard setup. Do practice the film loading a bit. It can be, it can be tricky when you're not used to it. And if you do load it incorrectly, you'll end up with either not exposing the film or exposing the film backwards. So do practice loading, although once you've got the hang of it, it really isn't an issue. Um, ASA dial on the back, that just tells the meter prism, if you're using a meter prism, what ASA is set, what film speed is set. The camera in its, in its basic form with the waist level finder, which is what we have mounted on here now, isn't metered. If you want metering, you do have to add a meter prism or a metered rotating uh, viewfinder. So 
opening and closing the back there to load the film just clips back on like I showed you there. That dial on the top is just to advance the film to the first frame or you can mount it to the camera to advance the, uh, the camera to the first frame. Just, um, just going back to this side, as I said, the viewfinder releases there. With This is the standard waist level finder. So it's just the standard waist level finder you look down on. They also make a number of prisms. Now they do make 90 degree prisms, which can be used up at eye level. It's quite a big bulky camera and using this up at eye level like this, it, it's, it's heavy. If you, if you are gonna do that, I'd recommend using the, the grip. This grip bolts onto the bottom and actually makes the, the handling up at eye level much, much better. And don't forget that because it's a 6.7 format, you can't just, with the waist level finder, you can't just tip on this side. You know, that's almost impossible to do. So if you're going to use it in the portrait format, then you do need either the prism, which allows you then to tip the thing through nice degrees like this, not a problem, or alternatively, I personally prefer these. This is just a um, this is a rotating poro finder, so you can continue to look down on the camera like this. And if you want to turn the camera into into the into the portrait format, you just twist it like that. You can then use it in you can then use it in portrait format. That's personally my favourite. I, th I think it handles better because you're you're holding the camera down slightly, but it's 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 a very very personal thing. Okay, so so. Viewfinders just slide backwards and forwards like that to take them on and off. Uh, interchangeable focusing screen, there are two little metal bars there that you slide back. You can then drop the, you can then drop the, um, the screen itself into the palm of your hands. Bronica screens made out of plastic, very, very soft, very, very easy to mark. So do be very, very careful with the screens. Just looking at the base, you have the, um, Coupling there for the motor drive and the grip. They do make a motor drive for this, but I wouldn't bother. It's really heavy. It's really slow. They're not very reliable. The um, the grip, that works really, really well. I wouldn't recommend the motor drive in the slightest. And you also have the, the battery, the battery here, which is the PX28 battery, which controls the shutter timing and the metering if you've got a metered head on the camera. As far as buying these secondhand, they are getting a bit long in the tooth, so you do have to be careful. I mean, this particular camera is in very, very nice condition cosmetically. You want to avoid the heavily used stuff. If, if they're showing a lot of signs of use, so a lot of metal showing through here, a lot of metal showing through on the base, a lot of metal showing through where the back mounts onto the body, avoid it like the plague. Look at the lenses carefully. Just make sure that the lenses are clean. Uh, I'll, I'll put some I'll put some video links up so that describes more about buying lenses. But fundamentally, make sure it's cosmetically cosmetically clean. Make sure the glass is clean and make sure the shutter is opening and closing as it should be. Um, to test, probably best to put a test film through just to make sure that it's light tight, to make sure the exposures are correct or, or where, where you expect them to be. Always test the flash sync on these just to make sure it's firing correctly at all, all shutter speeds. Um, and really just, just, just check the optics, check, check to make sure the glass is clean. Um, not just the lens, make sure the glass is clean on the, um, on the body. So when, you, um, when the camera's wound on, and you take the lens off the camera, just make sure that the mirror is clean in there as well. If you see lots of uh, lots of black bits inside, do check the light baffling and the, the, mir the mirror buffer up here, which is made out of a foam material. And over time, the foam does disintegrate. So you see lots of black marks on the mirror. It's a, it's, it's a sign the foam inside is beginning to disintegrate. Not the end of the world, but it is something you would need to get fixed. Um, Okay, so I think I think fundamentally that's that that's about it. You know, if you're buying if you're buying one of these second hand, just just check out the link on the videos, the link for the videos I, I've put up above. Make sure it's clean. If it is, you're good to go. Obviously, without wishing to state the the obvious, do buy from a dealer if you can, or buy from perhaps eBay where you get an option to return if you can. I wouldn't buy one of these privately personally unless you are very confident checking it out because they are, they are getting on a bit and you do, have, you do have to know what you're looking at. But hopefully this video has helped a bit with that. Um, if you have any comments, please stick them in the boxes below. Otherwise, please subscribe and like, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.